Hi, I'm Chris Rowe. I'm talking to you about molecular imaging and its applications in psychiatry. So molecular imaging is basically positron emission tomography. The application is really in the overlap between psychiatric symptoms and dementia. And this is particularly relevant because of a recent uh, Medicare item number for brain PET that will enable you to use FDG PET to assess your patients. PET starts with a cyclotron. This is a particle accelerator. You drop proteins into it, and by alternating magnetic and electrical fields, it accelerates these to a speed that's close to the speed of light, and they slam into a target material, making the nucleus unstable, and it becomes a positron emitter. So the positron emitting compound is then transferred into a hot cell, and it's labeled to a chemical that tags to the particular aspect uh, of the patient that you want to image. So for example, glucose metabolism in the brain. The patient's then put into a positron emission tomography scanner and images are produced that reflect the distribution of this tagged chemical. And in this image, we can see the chemical is sticking to amyloid plaques in a patient with Alzheimer's disease. FDG PET has a characteristic uh, appearance in patient with Alzheimer's disease showing hypometabolism or reduced tracer uptake in the lateral parietal cortex, the lateral temporal cortex, the medial posterior parietal area known as the precuneus, and the posterior cingulate gyrus. There are different patterns for different neurodegenerative diseases on brain FDG PET. So not only on this one do we see the classical Alzheimer's disease appearance in the top row, there's the logopenic aphasia variant of AD, which looks like AD, but it's more left-sided predominant. Dementia with Lewy bodies shows hypometabolism in the parietal and occipital cortex, sparing the posterior cingulate. Behavioral subtype of frontotemporal dementia shows hypometabolism in the frontal lobes, in periinsular areas, and in the anterior striatum. Progressive non-fluent aphasia variant of frontotemporal dementia shows hypometabolism in the dorsal left frontal cortex, which is Broca's area. Semantic dementia subtype of FTD shows hypometabolism in the anterior temporal lobe. So brain FDG PET can not only help you diagnose Alzheimer's disease, but it can help you with the diagnosis of other neurodegenerative conditions that may present with psychiatric symptoms. Frontal hypometabolism is fairly common. If it's moderate to severe, you think of frontotemporal dementia or chronic schizophrenia. It's moderately reduced in variants of Alzheimer's disease, progressive supranuclear palsy and subcortical vascular disease. And it's mildly reduced with advanced aging and with ethanol excess, depression and obstructive sleep apnea. There are limitations to FDG PET. The degree of hypometabolism reflects the clinical deficits, so findings can be subtle in mild cognitive impairment. Changes are less clear in the more elderly patients over the age of 75, and the sensitivity and specificity for Alzheimer's disease is around the 80 to 90% level. SPECT is also available on Medicare, but it's 15% less accurate than PET, and this is an example showing the same patient who had a SPECT and an FDG PET, and you can see the FDG PET changes are far clearer, giving much greater confidence in interpretation. We can also now image amyloid and tau plaques, the fundamental neuropathology of Alzheimer's disease. These are the patterns we see in Alzheimer's disease, second from the right. In frontotemporal dementia, there's no amyloid plaque, so you get a negative scan that looks like a normal study. And in dementia with Lewy bodies, there's plaques of variable density, but it has the same pattern as in Alzheimer's disease. So here's an FDG PET in a patient. There are features on it that are suggestive of AD, some mild reduction in the parietotemporal cortex. But on the right, we see an amyloid PET that is strongly positive and that confirms the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. So amyloid PET is strongly positive at the onset of symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, while FDG PET may take a while to develop the full pattern. We can look at the dopaminergic system for conditions such as Parkinson's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies. And this is one trace of a vesicular monoamine transporter. 
Here we see a healthy control on the left and a patient with mild Parkinson's disease on the right. In slices, you can see a healthy control on the left, Alzheimer's disease patient, they don't have any reduction in dopaminergic innovation, a patient with dementia with Lewy bodies and a patient with Parkinson's disease, and you can see loss of activity in the putamen in these conditions. This is useful for differential diagnosis in patients with Parkinsonian syndromes. Particularly relevant to today's lecture, it's extremely useful for distinguishing drug-induced Parkinsonism, in which the binding of these traces is actually often increased from Parkinson's disease where the binding is decreased. It's also very useful for distinguishing psychogenic Parkinson's disease from true Parkinson's. So I'll just finish with a few common scenarios where patients with neurodegenerative disease may present for psychiatric assessment because of anxiety, depression, and apathy, because these are very common features early in the development and the later phases of neurodegenerative diseases. Consequently, misdiagnosis and delay in diagnosis is very common, particularly in early onset Alzheimer's disease, which means onset before the age of 65, in patients with frontotemporal dementia and in dementia with Lewy bodies. Psychosomatic disorders and medication side effects may mimic neurodegenerative disease, and again, these investigations may be helpful. As I mentioned, BrainPet is reimbursed by Medicare for suspected Alzheimer's disease. Unfortunately, the VMAT DATPET is not reimbursed, so this does require substantial patient co-payment. Here's an example of a 55-year-old male presented with behavioural change, functional decline and non-specific cognitive findings. The diagnosis was unclear. It was uh, suspected that he had a psychiatric disorder, but the FDG PET shows very profound changes of Alzheimer's disease. This is a diagnostic scan for early onset Alzheimer's disease. This is the display. This actually shows the reduction in the areas of the brain by Z score or number of standard deviations away from normal. And you can see the pattern is typical for Alzheimer's disease. This is a patient, 58 year old, who presented with behavioral changes, uncertain whether this was on a psychiatric basis or frontotemporal dementia. And the FDG PET clearly shows severe frontal hypometabolism in a pattern that is classic for frontotemporal dementia. This is a case of a male in his early 50s, a former footballer with multiple concussions in which it was sus suspected uh, might have chronic traumatic encephalopathy. The FDG PET showed severe bilateral temporal hypometabolism, and this is a classic finding of the semantic dementia form of frontotemporal dementia. This is a case of dementia with Lewy bodies, showing that hypometabolism in not only the parietal cortex, but also the occipital lobes, and with sparing of the posterior cingulate gyrus in the middle image there, right in the middle of the brain, and the VMAT PET showing a reduction in putamen innovation. Final case, 71-year-old male diagnosed with Parkinson's disease eight years earlier due to tremor, but no functional decline. He was still a professional musician. He had requested and received escalating doses of medication and now came requesting deep brain stimulator treatment for his tremor. The clinician, however, was becoming suspicious of psychogenic component. This is his VMAT scan and we've got his scan in the right uh, compared to normal and we can quantify this and it actually shows increased tracer binding, not reduced tracer binding. This confirmed a diagnosis of psychosomatic tremor and the patient's anti-Parkinsonian medications were withdrawn and he was sent for psychiatric and psychological counselling. I think you will find this very useful for your psychiatric practice and thank you for your attention.